Hi, I'm Lisa from the blog Farmhouse on Boone. Today I have this chair that I picked up yesterday for $23 at my favorite thrift shop. I, of course, want to redo this chair. So I am going to show you my process. First of all, I'm gonna start with a staple gun, some scissors, some fabric, which I actually snagged this up last weekend at a antique shop. $4 for this set of vintage ticking. Well, I kind of think this might be just the perfect match for this chair. They were meant to be together. <laughs> I don't have any more of this trim, so I'm gonna be careful to remove it so that I can actually reuse it. That's my goal, because I'm impatient and I really wanna get this project done, especially because my husband and kids are out of the house for a minute. When you have a little time, you just go for stuff. So I'm gonna try to carefully remove everything on this chair. I wanna keep the pieces intact as much as possible because I can use them as pattern pieces. Also, if you do a project like this, be careful because uh, people used to use these upholstery tacks and they can hurt if you stick your finger in it. You know what you need is pliers for this. I got this all off, and now I'm going to use my pieces that I got off as pattern pieces. And I was sort of thinking before I took this off that these were all gonna be extra long and folded over to hide in the raw edge. And I realized now that they had just cut a piece this size and then use this to hide the raw edge. So that's exciting, that'll just be super easy to do. And then I'm gonna do the same thing using the seat cushion piece as a pattern to make another one. And the only place they folded it over to hide the raw edge was around these arms. So I'm gonna take that into consideration. But other than that, my trim is gonna cover up all that right here. So I don't have to worry about folding it over. I'm simply gonna cut these pieces, staple them on, and then I'm gonna hot glue back on the trim. You can see this is kind of old and worn. Ordinarily, you'd use batting. Again, I'm slightly impatient and wanna finish this project today without worrying about what I have and don't have. So I'm gonna kind of layer up some fleece that I have from the basement. I might even put a little stuffing on before the layer of fleece. So I'm just using what I have and I'm gonna just try to add a little bit of comfort to this chair. Here, I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna add that, because that there was almost like a little hole there in the center. So that's probably right there would use a piece. And then I'm gonna hide all that in with my fleece. The reason I'm doing the fleece is my hope is that it'll take away from sort of this unevenness. But I might even cut it to my pattern piece size. I'm gonna take a little bit of this out. I'm afraid it's too high. And then I'm going to staple on my fleece piece just to be sure this is all kind of down really well. I'm, I'm gonna staple it higher than I plan to staple my actual fabric. That way I won't have any hard time covering it up. Doesn't have to be on really well. My goal is just to get it to where everything's nice and even. That's all I'm trying to do here. So 
Since it's stretchy, I'm gonna pull it pretty tight because I want this to be even. And then I'm probably gonna leave one spot open and reach my hand in and just smooth it all out underneath this. And then I'll be ready to put on my fabric. Okay, so here's the nice uh, white fleece chair, nice and even. I've made it tight so that I can start putting on the fabric. So what I wanna do first is sort of find the middle point of the chair and then the middle point of this pattern piece so that I don't run into any surprises whenever I go to try, if I start stapling it and then I get to this end and realize, uh-oh, I put too much on that side. That's not what I wanna happen. So I'm going to find the center of this chair, which I'm gonna estimate because I'm lazy like that. If you're more of a particular person, I might recommend you actually measuring it. And I'm gonna start right here in front and then work my way around from there. I'm gonna pull it tight to the back and then I'm gonna start working around the arms. For the arm pieces, I'm gonna take a cue from the original chair and just pay attention to where they cut to fold these edges in. That's always the key with anything you're upholstering or slip covering. You want to look at the original piece, the same thing I do with my wingback chairs, and see where the original piping is, where the original seams are, and you just wanna mimic that. Looks to me, I'm gonna come around the rest of the way just to see where this hits. I think I'm gonna to wanna to cut a slit right in here. I don't wanna to cut too much, so I'm being very careful, but I'm gonna to need to cut more than that. I think I'm gonna to have to cut a little this way too. Now, they have it tucked over, and this is gonna work, but I think I might need to still take out just a little bit more of the bulk right here. So I'm gonna actually cut this little strip out, which it looks like they did in the original chair. I just was scared to do it right away because I didn't want to take out too much, but if you just work a little at a time, you can tell where they should be. Here we go. And a lot of it kind of slides underneath this arm too. And the trim will cover up some of the, some of the messiness a little bit. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna pull it a little tighter down here. And then I'm gonna trim this little bulky spot down here. And then once I glue on my trim, It'll be pretty. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the same process on this side and this arm. And then I'm gonna work the rest of the way around and this should be looking pretty good.
And now comes the definite funnest part of all of this. Most fun would be a better word and that's putting on the trim. Now the reason I say it's the most fun is it only requires a glue gun and it gives you a lot of satisfaction because you see all of these stringy things and that doesn't look very good. Well that's instantly gonna no longer be a problem when I simply hot glue on this trim. So I'm gonna do that all the way around. So as you can see, this was a very simple project. I actually was able to finish this whole thing in about two hours, probably, no, less than that, about an hour, um, with some kid interruptions, maybe more like two. No sewing required, just staples and glue and fabric. And the chair is looking quite nice and more to my taste and style. Definitely a project you should try if you see a chair like this that's in good condition, nice and sturdy at your local thrift shop uh, with some pretty lines and you know antiques shaped like this. Pick it up and try this out for yourself, especially if it's cheap, where could you go wrong with that? I hope to be on here soon doing a slipcover video. Those are a lot more involved, so obviously I'm procrastinating on that quite a bit more than this, which took me an hour and I got this chair yesterday and finished it up today. Um, so these are the kind of projects I actually really enjoy doing. Slip covers I think are beautiful and I love them, but they take some more time and you know, I have to get on that. So thank you so much for watching and stopping by the farmhouse. Please subscribe to my channel for more food from scratch, natural living in a handmade home.